Amen. Good morning. Good to see you all here on this Palm and Passion Sunday. It's a day that begins the most holy of weeks here in the Christian church, a day that recognizes the culmination of Jesus' life and ministry as we celebrate him and also uh, mourn with him. So it is good for us to be together. As I said, today is a day full of stories. We begin with Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem with the palm branches that we have and shouts of Hosanna. But as you know, we quickly then turn from a celebratory welcome to his death march to the cross. And um, it's almost too much to fit into one day, but because of the nature of this day, we let those stories speak for themselves. And we also, in these services, we've also changed the pattern of our worship service so that we find some of the practices that we take part in uh, ingrained in those stories. And so as we hear those stories, as they go along, whether you're following your bulletin or you're listening, um, there are bold lines marked in bold in your bulletin, and they will appear on the screen behind you. And those lines are for all of us to speak to, again, be part of that story. And one final note about today's service, there's not a time in here uh, designated to collect the offering, and so if you have offering or um, when you fill out your yellow offering card, you can turn those in uh, to the ushers or the plates that are in the back at the end of the service. So as good as it is to be together today as we uh, begin this Holy Week, I encourage you to go deeper in these stories that we're experiencing today uh, through uh, so many activities that we have this week. Um, each day, I will offer a short devotion at noon on Facebook Live, so join me online Monday through for, uh, Saturday at noon, um, either at noon or uh, shortly after. You can catch the video later on that day. Wednesday evening, we have a uh, family children's event. Uh, we'll meet in the fellowship hall at 6 o'clock. We'll have dinner and uh, do some activities around some of the Holy Week events. And then the great three days of worship uh, begins Thursday. We have Monday, Thursday service at 7. Uh, this year we will include foot washing for anyone who is willing to come forward to do that. Um, Good Friday worship is also at 7. And then our Easter worship is uh, Saturday and Sunday. So we look forward to all of that is to come. I encourage you to take part in it however you can. Of course, as always, the weekend after Easter, we continue the tradition of holy humor. I'm sorry. Fair warning. As we look past Easter, there's a couple announcements in your bulletin I want to lift up. One, um, the sewing group is beginning back again uh, starting April 1st. No joke. Um, they will meet starting Mondays. Anyone who is uh, willing to come and uh, uh, put their hands to work, I know... Uh, uh, they, are, they welcome any and all. So Monday, they begin. Uh, the Welka quarterly meeting is on Wednesday the 3rd. I know they have another guest speaker this week, or that week, so check that out in your bulletin. All are welcome to hear the speaker. And then April 10th, the Wednesday following, is a, an engaged neighbor workshop that we're hosting um, with the MU Extension Office. So I encourage you to read about that and check that out as well. With all of that being said, are there other announcements to share? Well then, let us begin our worship. You may remain seated as we begin. Say, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us rise, raise our branches into the air as we say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And as we hear our gospel reading, I have a couple helpers to come down to help. And so the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 11th chapter Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, 
you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. So they went away and they found a colt tied near the door outside in the street. They found a colt. (laughs) As they were untying it, some bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. They brought the colt to Jesus. They threw their cloaks on it. And Jesus sat on the colt. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, He went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. I want to thank my helpers, and I could use some more helpers, so if there are any of the kids who want to come forward and bring their palm branches, we are going to have our blessing of the palms, so all the kids are welcome to come forward at this time. Come on down. <clears throat> well, with my group of helpers, I invite the congregation to rise in body or spirit. And for the blessing of the palms, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. For our procession this morning, our kids are going to help lead us around the sanctuary a few times. As we go around, anyone's welcome to jump out and join us as we go and return to your pews as you are ready. So let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen.
They blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. As we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, burial, and resurrection, let us pray. O God of mercy and might, in the mystery of the passion of your Son, you offer your infinite life to the world. Gather us around the cross of Christ and preserve us until the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated at this time. If anyone else would like to come forward for the children's sermon, you're welcome to it. This, you're welcome to it. Good morning. Wow, that was exciting. You know what you did? You had a parade. The people heard that Jesus was coming to town and they were excited. They lined the streets. They covered the street with cloths. They cheered and said wonderful things about Jesus when he came through town. That was pretty great, wasn't it? Trouble is, it didn't stay that way. Ugh. There were people who didn't love Jesus the way, the way we do, and they wanted him gone. And unfortunately, it happened soon after that parade. Do you know what the word betrayal means? Anybody? You forgot? You forgot? Okay. Betrayal means like somebody you love and trust does something that's harmful to you, that hurts you. It hurts your feelings, it hurts, may hurt you bodily, but it's painful when somebody that you really love and trust betrays you. Well, you wouldn't think this, but two of the disciples betrayed Jesus. Judas, he led the soldiers to him and he betrayed him for money. Oh, and Peter, when the, pe the crowds were chanting, you know, kill him, and they were asking, hey, don't you know Jesus? Weren't you one of him? And he denied that. He said, no, I was not. Not once, not twice, but three times. He said, I do not know that man. Oh, can you imagine how Jesus felt? My goodness, that had to hurt. You know, Jesus had one last supper with him, one last meal, and he knew already that Judas was going to betray him for money and that Peter would deny him. He knew those things. But you know what? He let them set the table. He let them eat with him. He washed their feet. Jesus loved them even though they were going to be betraying him. He forgave them. And you know what? When somebody does that to us, say you have a friend and he wants to be your, he or she wants to be your best friend. And then, you know, a couple of weeks go by and he says, I don't want to be your best friend anymore. I'm going to be so-and-so's best friend. And that hurts. It makes you feel bad. It happens all the time in, the, in grade school. But God taught us a lesson that day. He wants us to forgive. He wants us to love them anyway. You don't have to like what happened, but boy, he wants you to forgive them. Because that's, that's what Jesus has, te has been teaching this whole time. Forgiveness. Forgive your enemies. Forgive those who do wrong against you. And he did. He let them sit at the table with him. He let them have a meal with him. So we need to remember that and open our hearts to forgive people when they do us wrong. Okay? Because sometimes it will happen. And it's not going to feel good. But remember, Jesus said to forgive. Okay? Let's have a little prayer. Repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus made. 
and we hope to learn more about this as this week goes on. Amen. Okay. Thank you for coming up today. Trouble her. She has performed a good service for me, for you always 
have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever their good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. When the chief priests heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give Judas money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he went, enter, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asked, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. The disciples began to become distressed and said to him, one after another, Surely, Surely not I. I. It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. For woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give thanks and praise because on that night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, as we heard, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Hear now, Lord, the prayer you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, let us dine with Jesus as he offers himself to us in remembrance of his life. Communion this morning will be at stations at the front of the sanctuary. All are welcome.
remain seated. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to Jesus, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Truly I tell you this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Lifting our voices and turning toward God, let us pray for the church, the earth, and all who are in need. God, our strength, we live in a world that finds ways to divide us in any and every way. Give us the guidance and courage to stand up for those less fortunate in the spirit of love and compassion. Help us to bring healing and hope to others. Lord, in your mercy. God, our creator, we welcome spring with open arms. You have refreshed us with sunshine. Protect us from inclement weather so that farmers may cultivate the land and sow their seeds for a bountiful harvest. Just as the earth awakens from its winter slumber, so must our congregation and community be reawakened. Breathe your life-giving spirit into us, renew us, and refresh us. Lord, in your mercy. God the Almighty, many in our world suffer from daily injustice, hate, oppression, and fear. Hear these voices and protect your people in all lands. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, you have answered the prayers for healing from our biblical ancestors. Now hear our cries of pain and sorrow and grant us your healing hand. Today, we especially pray for the comfort and health for those whom we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, giver of life, thank you for the blessings of life and for the peace you grant those who have departed this life. We especially pray for those who are fresh on our minds and hearts as we name them for our Garden of Easter lilies. And today we pray for Mike Finley and his family. Let us all have the assurance of Jesus 
that we will all one day join you in your heavenly grace. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Father, as we partake in Holy Week services, forgive us of our many sins. Bless us with health and happiness. Fill us with your spirit. Renew us in this life and remind us of the ultimate sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. We yearn to be more like him, trusting in your word, faithful to your promises, confident in your plans for us, and abiding in your commandments. Thank you for loving us so deeply and completely. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he drew himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were only possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? <coughs> keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, Judas went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. We will read Psalm 31 responsibly. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me.
They took Jesus to the high priest, and all of the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know, do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is the one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times and he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to the Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back. Crucify him. Pilate asked them. Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crowd, the crown, They put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hey, king of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his clothes on him. 
Then they led him out to crucify him. By, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription on the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, uh -huh. you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Truly, Truly, this, this man, man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. They followed him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. 
Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where the body was laid. God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Our journey continues. Thanks be to God.